really appreciate that. Sarah is on BPR right now, so we thought we'd let her talk to thousands of Vermonters while we start to do our work. Um, and I just want to say from the outset for our guests visiting who are not legislators, if you've been here in the past, um, we are in more of an organizing mode and we're going to use our Thursday meeting <coughs> as a time for us to organize. So we're likely to see less presentations from outsiders. We're likely to have less dialogue with the public. And we would just ask for your patience with that because frankly, we got four and a half months to try to drive through an agenda that I think we all want to see move forward. And this is our time to have a working meeting. So I just want to be upfront with that. Um, you know, it's not to say we won't ever have outsiders speak and experts in, but by and large, um, we are going to be focused on our work and a weekly check in and sort of trying to use these meetings. That um, so today I've given legislators a handout. The, as you know from our, our um, summer works groups, we came up with what ended up being four or five, depending on how you count, banner bills, and a lot of other good ideas. So today we're going to talk about the other good ideas, and we're calling them the every committee bills, or we'll start talking them maybe the EC bills. Okay. So that's what we want to talk about today. They're little ideas. They're not bills necessarily. They're tough. They're they're conversations we need to have in specific committees, or they're wording that we're going to tuck into the bills that are already moving, or things that we're going to explore. Um, so that's what is going to be the focus of our discussion today. Um, but before we do that, we have two announcements. One from Chair Bridlin, and one from Tom Hughes. Go ahead. No, it is very brief. Um, we're in the final hours or minutes of uh, getting co-sponsors for the Global Warming Solutions Act. We're pretty close to 80, and yeah. it'd be nice to hand that in with uh, with a number that um, is nice and round like that. But I've sent emails out to a handful of folks who I know are want to be on the bill, um, but uh, I haven't gotten them yet. So if any of you are here, uh, look for me. We're going to hand the bill in for introduction tomorrow, and. Um, so you've probably got another three or four hours to go. So I'm here. Thank you. And Tom, tell us about tomorrow. So a number of you were in the State House back on November 17th when uh, the Vermont Youth Lobby organized what they were called the uh, Vermont Youth Climate Congress. They passed a declaration with a number of recommendations. And uh, tomorrow they'll be presenting those recommendations um, first to the Lieutenant Governor during his coffee hour, and then at 10.30 at a press conference in the Cedar Creek room. They would be delighted if any of you were able to join them. And then uh, from sort of 11 to uh, noon, they will be traveling across the State House delivering posters of their declaration to every committee room, their request to use not only to follow through on some of their recommendations, but to hang the, the uh, declaration in your committee rooms for the duration of the session so you have a daily reminder of what their representative's <coughs> generation is asking for. 10.30. 10.30 in the Cedar Creek Room. Okay. Thank you. Um, so the idea on the EC bills, can everybody live with that name? Every committee, right? A few years ago, the speaker said, well, every committee should work on climate change. I thought that was a great idea. And then all of you in our summer process came up with way too many ideas. Um, and so this is an attempt to look at things, you know, and you'll see, we'll go through the list. So my hope, and this list can grow and possibly we'll get crossed off, but most weeks, it would be my hope that we check in and we will name names and we will hold people's expectations because we got to get this done. And so, you know, some of it is uh, a conversation. So follow up on complete street progress. Everybody know what we're talking about? We passed complete streets a number of years ago. I'm not aware of how we're doing. So someone in house transportation, presumably, and these are my guests and Sarah's guests of where this would land, okay, the column on the left is, Who's going to be tasked 
with asking someone in house transportation for data for an update on some fleet streets, right? And so then, um, Molly, I'm going to pick on you because you, I think of you. Okay, great. See, <laughs> boom, first one's done. Um, and we're going to keep the list, and then next week maybe we'll see. Okay, who has an update? And then when Molly um, forgot, not that Molly would ever forget, we will say, well, Molly. Next week, your homework's due. So that's the idea, okay? We're, we're, we're in this together. This is, in some cases, inserting a sentence into a bill that's already moving, or an idea, or starting a conversation. This is a wide range of things. But uh, while we will spend time and talk about and learn about our, our banner bills and keep an update on that, this has also got to be, I think, some of our workloads for session. And I think some of them are very little, like, Ask about the police streets. Sorry. Can I make a suggestion? Please. So I'm looking at this and I do see resilience is here specifically, yep. but I, I think resilience is much broader. So I think we should make the suggestion for every committee um, to look at what resilience means in their committee. It might mean mental health, it might mean forestry and um, having wild forests instead of current use in some places. So for every committee to look at what resilience means, as well as social equity and social justice, to have those two things be um, included in yeah. every committee's work. And it's a good, thank you. I think, I, look, we're trying to get organized and better organized, but at some level, what we're trying to do among the 80 of us and broadly among the 180 of us, is recognize that we need to always be thinking about climate in just about every conversation we're having in committee. So it's an excellent reminder. Also, Maureen reminds me that we have a resiliency working group that has been one that was created since our summer process, so we will check in with them quickly uh, in, the, in the next week or two, get an update there. And also, um, Emily Kornheiser and a group of folks led a, a discussion around principles. Um, we're, we're, we're going to check in on that. That is meant to be principles for our work. And uh, it would be my hope that we would um, probably put that on the agenda for next week to begin a discussion and by the end of the month have us agree or take some kind of vote. So uh, thank you. I'm sorry, Sarah's radio thing came up kind of last minute yesterday. So. I'm trying to do the best I can. So uh, back to the EC bills. Does this basic outline make sense? And if you have ideas that aren't on here, we can um, bring them up. Jim. Yeah. Um, thank you. I'm very disappointed not to see ways and means specifically mentioned. Well, I don't know. That's, that's not true. All right. So Jim just volunteered for. Anyway, whatever it is. Yeah. Yes. No, and, and actually, we did try to make sure that every committee was represented. So I haven't checked on that for a while. So, um, so let's just unless are there are more questions. And again, this is going to be iterative. I hope next week some people will come forward with little ideas that we can add to this list. Um, we were we, we somebody emailed me a suggestion two days ago. I went to add it to the list. It was already on. So let's just keep this going. But if, it's, if folks are open to it, we'll just plow through this, try to give it an assignment. It doesn't have to be only one person, but a primary uh, person that it can be responsible uh, that we can ask about next year. I will just point out um, in the middle of our side panel is Bob the Green Guy, who has been helping us stream a lot of our, our uh, community events, streaming this now, and of course, uh, everybody knows John Walters, now it's Digger, so we are in a press uh, environment and a live environment, and that's the way we like to do our work. So just uh, point that out. Andy, did you have a question? So if, if there are new ideas, do you want, do you want people to email you? How do, how do they get at you? Uh, well, let's see how our timeline goes, and you could be number 28 um, if, if we can do it. And if not, we're going to keep working on this. This is, you know, I don't know if we'll do this every week, but I think some kind of check-in here is my hope for us um, most needs to, to understand what we cross off, what was accomplished, and what still needs work. So, uh, one of the ideas that came out, thank you Molly for taking on a check in on Complete Streets, uh, was a follow up on driver's ed curriculum. This was an idea that the Transportation Working Group came out. This is about idling laws, one example. 
Uh, somebody suggested, you know, we really ought to educate people about alternatives to single car riders and single car ownership, um, sharing the roads with bikes, EVs. Um, so this would be kind of in the driver's ed curriculum. Does that belong in house trans in transportation or in ed? Any transportation. any transportation? Okay, we're not going to only give it to Molly because there's a lot of folks there. Um, I think it's one Yay, it's me! Yay! Okay. Becca. <laughs> yeah, most recent drivers said Brad. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <Yeah. laughs> and to be clear, this hopefully is, is a collaborative process, but uh, when this item hasn't been done, uh, we will call it Becca. Okay? Um, the other idea was. Should we be talking about the speed limit? The lower you drive, the more efficient your vehicle. There's some idea of those flashing signs, slow down, save money, something like that. Now that is controversial, uh, but at least should be a discussion. Molly, do you have a question? I just wanted to say that Ryan Savage put this out on his Facebook page, and within years, <coughs> there was like a huge number of responses upset about it. But we have been talking about signs. And yes, we've had conversations in our committee already about it, and we will continue to have more. And specifically, what got so much uh, kerfuffle yesterday was uh, Representative McCullough has a, a introduced a bill to us to reduce uh, interstate speeds from 65 to 55. I think most of us uh, want to do education around the 65 speed limit and how folks reduce their greenhouse emissions and do the education, which is specified here, uh, not go that far. So I don't think this will be nearly as controversial as what we yes. discussed yesterday in house transportation. Uh, and I'm happy to take this on if nobody okay. else wants to leave it behind. Okay, thank you. And uh, last one for, uh, and, and again, there's nothing magical about house transportation that was just our shot, was uh, push for subsidies for. Uh, Electric vehicles and electric bikes. We've started subsidizing electric vehicles. That program just rolled out a few weeks ago. Uh, the the feel. I think we put this in house because this would likely be in the trans T bill. I have you a guys, bill. You guys go first. I have a bill to subsidize electric vehicles. Okay. It'll hopefully get in the T bill. Okay, okay. So Molly, we're gonna go give that one to you. But Mary's right behind you. So with an assist from Mary. Okay. Um, the fee-based study. Does everybody know what we're talking about when we're talking about fee-based study? Andy, do you want to describe it? Because it was came out of your committee. Fee-based study. It was completed by Agency of Transportation. There was a study to look at fee-based for vehicles, which would be a fee on less efficient vehicles and a rebate on more efficient vehicles. And it could be done different ways. I think the study came up with four different kind of possibilities on how a fee-based could be structured. They didn't have a recommendation. <coughs> Kind of more like an academic paper on what's happened in other states. No, other, no state has ever passed it. Only a couple countries have, have done it. And so it, we're going to definitely be looking at it in Senate transportation and seeing what, what could be done, what would be the best way to move forward on something like that. All those in favor of giving that one to Andy. Okay. Um, this could be either, but uh, the, the vexing issue of how do we. Um, create a registration structure for electric vehicles in lieu of the gas tax and, and the, I would expect both committees are at some level wrestling with this. Um, are there, are there, is this one need uh, a, a individual on it or is it just sort of so baked into the work you're doing already? What do people think? Well, it might be part of the, <coughs> the incentives generally, but there was also another study that we asked for called a weight-based registration study. So I can report on that and see if there's a connection between that and either EV specifically or just more efficient vehicles, lighter vehicles, vehicles okay. that do less damage to the infrastructure. Okay. Thanks, Dorothy. I think also there was a study that said until there was a 15% um, okay. um, saturation of electric vehicles, it didn't, didn't make any sense to do any kind of registration, any kind of extra gas tax to put it. You hear a different issue. You hear, you hear both ways, right? We, we, we don't want to build resentment in a way, but, but obviously you want to make sure the market opens up. Um, all right, thank you, transportation folks. Uh, moving on to Ed, um, and I, I, are there folks
folks here in either ed committee. Okay. All right. Excellent. So the idea is our tech ed um, programs, both uh, VTC and then at the high school level, we're really dependent on them um, for the workforce that's needed for organization, <coughs> on and on and on. So sort of an attempt to make sure um, we at least have curriculum that would help uh, with the possibility of aligning our values that way in our ed curriculum. I think too on our fall scores, some of us heard a lot of interest from um, K through 12 teachers and students about just gen general like climate education. They feel like it's not happening. And so I know that there's opportunity to look at just um, yep. beyond Should we make it a second problems. one? Yep. I like that. <coughs> so that's a separate one. We'll just call that uh, climate <laughs> education. Okay. So, um, Kath, you're willing to, yeah. to do, well, Kath and Caleb, we're going to split that up, okay? All right. House Energy, uh, timeline for stronger building codes. Where is our... Oh, ah, here he is, Scott. Yeah, okay. So, stronger building codes, sure, but we aren't even uh, enforcing our existing building codes. And a lot of you know that we had a series of meetings this summer around building energy, building thermal energy. Uh, and uh, there were about four recommendations that came out of that. A couple of them, some of them are covered here. A couple of them I have in a bill um, that I have in my pocket here. I'd be happy to have some co-signers um, that would name uh, an authority having jurisdiction, which is the, the office that would be in charge of, of, of interpreting codes and also adjudicating conflicts between uh, energy codes and, and, and other codes, if there are any. Um, and the proposal is that, that office would be the office that does building codes now, which is the Division of Fire Safety. Uh, all of the building codes like electrical and plumbing and heating. Uh, and the second part is to add one small hammer to a narrow segment of the market, newly constructed single family housing that would have to document compliance with energy code, existing energy code. Uh, in, in order to close on the house. So there would be a title defect unless you could provide that documentation. Um, and so those, those are the two elements. It's, it's sort of a bare bones bill and a conversation starter. There's uh, some opposition in some form, but uh, we haven't had anybody to need it. We're not co sponsor. So Scott, we'll give you that, recognizing this is a conversation piece as much as, yeah. I mean, we love to talk language in somewhere, but yeah. Um, then uh, folks on, on the housing, uh, general housing, house, housing general, blah, 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 blah. Um, the idea is uh, one, one particular idea that came up was EV charging in multifamily buildings has been very vexing. And I don't know if there's anyone that's willing to explore that a little bit, see if there's any appetite. Um, uh, Tom, are you on that committee? Would you, yeah, can we give sure. you that one? Yeah. You know, not again. Uh, maybe we can maybe we can make that a mandate, but um, at least we've got to understand the lay of the land and what the hurdles would be. Um, I mean, we'll talk because it's in the new edition of the building and commercial building energy code. There's a thing in there about EV charging stations for commercial. Yeah. Okay. Um, house House Natural um, is is anybody here? Where's our friend McCullough? Oh, uh, great. Um, are, you guys are dealing with Act 250, right? Is that that's yep. early priority? So one idea is Act 250 does have some code, I think, and just trying to understand that and see if there's a, an opportunity to strengthen that as you're moving forward with changes to Act 250. Um, so we're going to give that to you, okay? Wonderful. Um, Senate Finance. Oh dear, does anybody sit on Senate Finance? <laughs> that's me. Um, um, oh, that's right. The, the idea that we could, uh, that Freddie, Freddie and Franny want to help people get into green mortgages. So as you're closing your house for a $200,000 mortgage, you might actually be allowed to take a $250,000 mortgage to invest in solar, for an example. Um, Chris Delia and I are meeting. He's he's hunting for somebody there to talk to. So I'm happy to take this on. I think this is a, 
an interesting and worthy uh, goal, and I will hold myself to the fire there. Um, Scott, will you tell us one last time what STEM stands for? <laughs> Uh, school Energy Management Program. No, state, state, yeah. or state Energy Management Program. But right, there was a school. There's there was two schools. Yeah. So, so uh, CEP is a state fund <laughs> that we lend ourselves to do weatherizing in state buildings. Last year we reauthorized <laughs> it for five years. five years. It's been wildly successful, as we know, weatherization pays for itself. Um, the idea has come up that we should somehow help municipalities and schools get access to some similar kind of money. So whether or not it would be an expansion of SEMP, I don't know. And finding money is always tricky. But we ought to at least have that discussion. Um, and I'm not really sure if it is an institutions. I, I don't honestly know where this belongs. Um, I have the bill that's being introduced. So go ahead and introduce it. We'll see where, where it's at. OK, Mari. Just to throw this out there, I'm curious also about how investors, and I've had, I think you read yeah. things, how people with money that want to invest in something other than Wall Street could invest in the municipal green bond. Okay, I'm going to make that a new one. Um, the authorization of SEMP last year, <coughs> closely. where did that go through? Is that a, was that in the big bill? In the energy bill. Chris? Okay. Um, would you be willing to explore whether or not there's a possibility <coughs> to expand that? Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay, Jim Madsen's already volunteered for this. Um, develop sustainable funding source for weatherization. Ooh. We, we had a point with it last year, but we weren't successful, as you were. Um, there are a number of ways that we might get sustainable funding. Ways and means, we'll be looking at them, um, A, for this specific purpose, or, you know, we're always looking at revenue sources to see what's available for this, that, and the other kind of thing. Um, I'm going to do essentially what we did last year or tweak it for something to that effect, but it would be nice to know what kind of a coalition we have behind us yeah. before we float it out there on the floor. Um, well, so, so that is a good reminder for a couple of reasons. Uh, in an era when we are all itching to have uh, successful climate bills move, let's vow not to surprise each other. Um, and I will say Sarah and I I uh, got a half an hour with the governor a month ago, and uh, to his credit, he is, I would say, of our suite of strategies, weatherization is the one he likes the most. He comes from construction, maybe it's the concrete nature of it. Um, so we said, well, super, we hope you will fully fund uh, the weatherization, because we did cobble together the money last year, and he said they were working on it. So in a few weeks, it will be very clear whether or not they worked on it or uh, are going to leave it to us to come up with. Uh, so I think more than anything, we wanted to make sure this was not forgotten because it's obviously a big priority for us. This doesn't qualify as some little thing we're going to tuck yeah. in there. Right. right. And also, while you're looking over here, Chris, um, with regards to electric charging stations and all things electric that we're potentially adding to the grid, there are potential um, um, inconsistencies with regards to where the grid is robust, where it needs to be um, beefed up, retrofit, um, and I've got a bill that may still go to Tim's committee and maybe get tacked on with some other things. But the issue is we need to keep in mind that the grid as it presently exists out there won't support everything we put on it everywhere we want to do it. There's, there are grid upgrades that are necessary. Somehow they have to get paid for. I've just seen the utility suck it up because we all benefit. But anyway, just keep in mind that, that those are issues that need to, need to be worked on, particularly as we rely on the grid to yep. do all the things we want it to do. Okay. So, uh, um, we're all looking, at, looking into that. For sure. Uh, invest in local foods for school and institutions, expand farming table. That's something Senator Hardy is not here right now, and I have a bill in. Uh, we are going to make this a priority at Senate Ag, I believe, so I'm happy to 
flag that for myself. Is there anyone in house ag here right now? John, um, can we count on you to uh, soften the ground for this kind of idea? Um, and, and I should say that the bill originally on the Senate side has gone to the Ed Committee. So folks on Ed, um, you know, because it's a school lunches, um, we need to have that discussion. The basic idea, and this has been happening in a few other states, is we'll say, if you can prove that you're getting 25% food locally, we will give you 25 cents a plate. And the idea is, if you talk, whenever you dig into this, you quickly run into all sorts of infrastructure problems. There's a, a, a principal at Essex Middle School who stops and buys maple syrup, puts it in the back of his car and drives to school on his way to school. This is not how we should be functioning farm to school. And so the, the idea is we were racking our brains with food hubs and, and the truck system to get food to schools. And then we thought, no, 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 other schools have, other states have invested and made it clear that they're gonna be invested and then people build the systems. So that's our attempt here. Uh, I think it would be quite exciting, good economic stimulus as well as uh, local food. Is, is good for fun. Uh, yeah. Can I speak to that? Please. please. Yeah. Um, in Putney, about five years ago, we did away with our traditional food service and we went to this uh, local, uh, local food, uh, having local food in our, in our schools. Uh, Part of what grew out of that was a business that's now called Food Connect, which has become a hub. And it's been a great service to our local farmers now because they don't have to go looking for somebody to do that, that hauling to, to the market for themselves. So if anybody wants to know more about that, look at Food Connect, so I'll be glad to talk to them. There's a model down in Lincoln County right now. Last year, 30% growth. It's, it's, it's the right time for something like this. And, and I'll tell you that uh, Sodexo, which runs all the food service at UBM, they have committed their national leader on this after they got booted out of California schools altogether because of their resistance to local food. At UBM, they committed to buying 20% local. And uh, some of the, uh, the farm to school people tell, tell us that the people putting pressure on UBM, continued pressure, are Vermont kids who came through Vermont Farm to School schools and really got it, right? It's not just about local products and produce in schools. It's about the curriculum and the gardens and really helping people understand, which is, which is I think, vital to this whole project. So um, we're kind of ed people, ag people. Um, we got to keep in, this in mind. And, and I would say it's money, but even if every school did it at the 25%, talking about three million dollars out of a 1.6 billion dollar ed fund this is we should be able to figure this out um, similarly the infrastructure stuff um, I'm the only Senate Ag person here uh, John um, will count on you as well and John O'Brien and others in House Ag to look at food hubs and, and you know the working lands uh, so we can work on that together okay John yes uh, all right uh, gleaning. This is actually also shows up on Salvation Farms in the back. Um, gleaning is the idea that there are on any given farm in Vermont ugly vegetables that are left behind. They're perfectly nutritious and edible, but they're ugly, and so they won't go on the food on the shelf at the supermarket, and they're wasted. They're they're tilled in. There's an organization called Salvation Farms. There are a coalition of people all over the state who will come and pick those up try to get the food to food shelves, among others. Um, Salvation Farms, the business model depends on uh, uh, workforce training dollars because they can't actually pay full freight. They've been trying to, and have been briefly in the Windsor prison uh, as part of a curriculum there, also producing food for the prisons and elsewhere. And that's kind of been, um, cut off at the needs. So there's, a, there's potentially an institutions committee discussion here. There's an ag committee discussion um, and, and corrections and institutions. So anyone here on house institutions, can we give you, uh, would you be willing to explore that a little bit? Sure. I mean, you know, you guys are knee deep in corrections yeah. challenges, but um, okay, wonderful. Chris? 
Yeah. yeah. The Vermont Food Bank also has regional gleaners all around. Yeah. There's a whole coalition of them. And Salvation Farms is just one organization. Auburn, oh, Auburn is uh, uh, president of the board. They're going through some changes. There's nothing magical about them other than they're already doing the work, and it's good work, and it's part of the climate agenda. Um, all right. Uh, similarly, food spoilage, right? Is everybody familiar with Drawdown? Drawdown was a scientific analysis of, of the top 100 strategies um, to reduce carbon. And <coughs> top five, two of them, I think, was food waste. Uh, or at least one of them in the top five around the world. And we are on the leading edge in this country because of our mandatory composting, but sort of strategies here. So we just want to kind of continue to have that discussion and recognize it as part of the climate, uh, climate uh, strategy. Sarah Bray, are you guys already going to be looking at these issues? Do you anticipate this year or? Uh, well, we will. And I think some of it's going to be sort of holding fast to our, our, 20, uh, our 2020 deadline for getting all the way down to the residential level for handling organic waste. Okay. Carrie, any, any discussion in your committee? Or, or you guys have jurisdiction over solid waste, right? Um, let's just, you know, I don't know if there's a big action item here, but we need to just keep this in mind. Um, so if it's okay, uh, we'll come back to both of you because you're your only committee folks here right now. Divert compost. Uh, we are dealing with chickens and compost. Everybody's familiar with that, but Polina and I and others signed on that bill. I'm happy to deal with that. I think Senate Ag is going to take the lead on that. Uh, biochar, where's Cape Webb? Cape Webb is not here today. Uh, what's that? She has a bill. Okay. Do we think that is going to House Ag? Do we anticipate that? Yes. Okay. Um, so I'm going to flag this for Kate Webb because she's the person who's spoken the most to me about it, but also um, Bartholomew, uh, if we could ask for updates from you periodically. And I think a lot of us need to understand what we're going to talk about. I could not begin to tell you, and I can fudge my way through telling you about most things. Um, <laughs> resiliency Working Group recommendations. We're going to wait for that, um, but as Mari points out, this is actually necessary for all of us um, to be keeping in mind. Chris, can I just make one point? Yeah. That is our next resiliency meeting is going to be next Friday the 17th at 8 a.m. Right now. And so you we'll, can feel free to post to the list. We'll Everybody has access. We'd ask you not to go crazy, but uh, what, what do you, what's the address? To, mm -hmm. to, to, if you, if, if somebody, you know how you can write, um, House Ag, House underscore Ag at Lag State. It's the same thing for the, the Climate Caucus, but I don't. It's the Climate Solutions Caucus. Climate Solutions Caucus at Lag. That gets to all of us. That's how we communicate. And all of you, it's an open list. So don't go crazy, but for announcements like that, feel free to do that. Okay. The announcement will probably go out today. I just want to give everyone up. And we will meet next Thursday, too, so you get another show. Okay. Great. Thanks. Well, we heard from Vermont Emergency Management and the National Guard. Great. Uh, we already kind of covered 21, so sorry, this list is not. Emily Kornheiser also wants to look on <coughs> Okay. And Mari wants to do 22. Oh, look at that. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, so this is the Capstone Low Income Fuel Efficient Vehicle Program. Um, that sort of is. Hold on. Yeah, Molly and Sandy are waiting for Molly. I think so, Molly. Oh, uh, we just had a presentation on that. Um, and I have to assume that they're just sort of getting it off the ground. But they're definitely going to need to keep that going. And so we're going to be getting numbers from them about how many people are using the program and how much time we could put into the, the 2021 Do we think maybe we got this wrong? Do we think that is a T bill thing? It was last year. Absolutely, last yeah. It was okay. in the T bill last year. Okay. So, um, but Sandy, it's good to know, and it might be worth having a quick a discussion in your committee because that, of course, does impact the work you're doing. Um, GMAT is our, the Chittenden County bus services and down here, right? Washington County, I believe. And Loyal. And and Loyal. Loyal. It's Franklin. our biggest bus, Franklin. Franklin. They're having some solvency issues, and 
we were already thinking it was time to think of strategies to stop seeing so many empty buses driving around. Um, but then they're having their own solvency issues. So we want to have uh, the infrastructure. So that discussion, I assume, is T-bill. Um, I'm going to flag that. Mary, you're on transportation, so we're going to give you that um, and Andy, OK? That's going to be an ongoing one. Thank you. Um, community resilience. Now, this is a specific one around seniors and floods. Um, folks from Rochester lived through this uh, eight years ago. We're still paying for that. When people ask you how you're going to pay for this, we're still paying for, for Irene. Um, but in particular, seniors, we, we have, everybody knows this, we get our impact on climate is very easy to, to measure is not seven to nine inches more rain every year. It's amazing talking to farmers. They, they get it. They're, they're not climate deniers in the Um So flooding and, and how that impacts seniors. This maybe would be a human services issue. I mean, there comes a real public safety, which is a GovOps issue. Um, but it's an example that we can point to uh, to bring others along who don't think climate change is sort of impacting us. It's also, Carl, this is kind of what the resiliency committee is working on. Yeah, this is something we can bring up with um, emergency management. Yeah. Every town has an emergency operating plan for us to deal with without So, am I hearing GovOps and <laughs> House? Carl, where are you? General? No, no, I'm corrected. Yeah, right, right. Uh, so who, how, how do we, who, who wants to be pinned down for that one? Because that is multi-jurisdictional. <coughs> is that, is, is that primarily GovOps if it's, if it's safety, public safety? Anybody? Public so we'll nominate Sarah. Uh, I'm not sure. Sarita? This is a former EMT. I mean, it's definitely in their plans, but I'd be glad to you know, make some phone calls and just see around the state how they would be dealing with that specific. Okay. That's, that's wonderful and a good beginning. So this is the kind of idea where it's not an assignment for Sarita to, to finish. It's actually, in this case, to explore. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to put you there. Thank you. All right, um, Mary, uh, do you want to talk about the genuine progress indicator? This is um, something. Sure, I've, um, I've been in touch with the Gun Institute. I think people probably remember that. Um, oh, it, it was during uh, Peter Shumlin's time that they, um, that would be the indicator we used to see how uh, well we're doing in the state. Um, well, we adopted it through the legislature, but it's never been funded. And I talked to the people at Gun, and found out that they try to cobble some grad students together and some funding from some foundations, but it could be a really robust indicator that we could do so much um, better if we actually funded um, this. And it, it, is, it is something that we really wanted to do when we got through. So I went to, I think it was two years ago, I went to appropriations and asked for um, a line item, but I was not successful. I don't see. Diane or Mary here. Is there anyone else on, on the House folks? Mary, can we task you to, to yeah. flag that for those? Mm -hmm. Okay, moving right along. And Salvation Funds, we've already sort of talked about that. The, the last one that uh, Mari added to um, the list is an interesting one. It came up at the Bristol uh, Community Forum, 65 people in Bristol, by the way. Um, that was fun. The idea is that people might want to move, you know, bonds are a safe investment and people as they're approaching retirement are counseled to make safe investments. And could you invest in some kind of um, bond that would help, in, as the example, Bristol pay for solar to power the streetlights? I don't, does anyone, who's close to the treasurer? Who would like to talk to the treasurer about this stuff? Or Vita. Or Vita, that's true. Anybody have uh, anybody willing to take that on? Uh, what? Sarah Bray, you're well. You're asking a question, or you're saying yes? No, I'm saying yes. Okay, thank you. The name keeps changing, but we've been poking at this idea for a few yeah. years. Yeah, yeah. We got it. You know, I mean, one of the things you saw this fall going around the stage, people want to get involved. They want to help, and and we got to great opportunities. Well, this is not the most riveting presentation, but this is a workload for us. 
Uh, does anyone quickly have ideas that they want to add to the list right now? Not all of your pet bills, okay? Um, um, uh, <clears throat> carbon sequestration and storage and forestry. We actually passed something last year about this, and the Energy <coughs> Committee had some very compelling testimony about that yesterday. And I, it, it, it's it, the the potential impact is very large. Okay. Um, you want to take that on? Uh, it wouldn't be probably that. That's actually the. Uh, uh, forestry and, and, and ad committee that okay. that bill came out of, but I can talk. Well, we're talking about Senate ag. I can tell you, John, you as well. There was a working group over the summer. Yep. The report will be out probably this week. Yep. Um, so I'm just going to say ag, folks, because that's a good one. Yeah. I'm, I was going to second what Abram said. Uh, the report that came out, but also uh, EAB uh, looking at Emerald Act for Yes. Something and, and in generally how we develop healthy forest ecosystems to combat these. Okay. Uh, anybody else? There was one more hand, wasn't there? Okay. This is going to be iterative, so email me ideas or bring them next week. We will generally be in room 10. Uh, and uh, and pick up your plates so they'll actually let us come back here if we ever ever in a pinch. And thank you very much, everybody. Uh, we have a lot of good work ahead. Um, uh, so